what we do here is go back, 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 back. back. Hello, fellow shooters. This is Catching Fire Three with some more. I love you, Colonel Sanders. The KFC dating sim. In an attempt to distract yourself from how slighted you feel by that interaction with Ashley, you take out the spell book you recovered yesterday and start flipping through the pages. Wow, that's that book. It looks like bad news. It's just something I found lying around. It would appear to be some sort of grim. grim Why do I always have to look something up? I don't even know if that's a word. Never heard that word. Grimoire. Grimoire, okay. Grimoire, but I don't really believe in that magic stuff. A grimoire? Like a book of spells? I don't know who would spend so much time decorating a magic book if it weren't really powerful. I can think of one surefire way to find out. You open to a page covered with arcane warnings. Cast only in case of extreme emergency. It says around the edges of the page. I could use the spell here that says it will, er will erase anyone I choose from all my memories. If I scrub out Colonel Sanders, it would probably help me focus better on the upcoming final exam. That is way drastic! Couldn't you do something else like anything else? Not rooted in dark magic? Maybe tie a string around your finger? Okay, fine, it is drastic, but desperate times calls for desperate measures. You've got a memory erasing spell sitting right in front of you and a pretty good excuse to try it out. Don't do it. You take your friend's advice and put the book away. It's almost time for class. Uh, I wonder what would have happened if I did it. Hello, now that I'm actually back to here after recording the rest of this video, including what you just saw, I wanted to see what would happen if I cast the forbidden spell. You begin to recite the spell, but you stumble on the words, and the only effect it seems to have is to make you forget what it is you were doing. Oh right, after looking at the page again, it comes rushing back to you. You've got a memory erasing spell. Oh god. You begin to recite the spell, but you stumble on the words, and the only effect it seems to have is to make you forget what it is you were doing. Oh right. <laughs> okay, this is kind of funny. You begin to write it. So I guess that's all it is. Like, seriously, don't do it. Memories are important. You begin to recite the spell, but you sum on the words. Alright, after looking at the page again, it comes rushing back to you. You've got a memory erasing spell sitting right in front of you, and a pretty good excuse to try it out. You begin to read it again, knowing that nothing can stop you now. Whoop, here goes nothing. Hold on to your butt. I wonder what just happened. Oh, I thought everything just was disappearing. What's going on? And this is a long loading sequence. I'll just cut to when it's over. You sleep softly as the morning sun casts a warm glow through the window of your modest student apartment. The world is peaceful and serene. You could stay in the moment forever. Are you- Oh my god, it just starts over? It just completely starts over. You will be there, what will you cook? Okay. So basically it just starts everything over again. Oh wow, interesting. Back to the main video. Or at least that's what I would say if I didn't figure out that it actually deletes your save as well, like your full-on save. I wanted to see what I missed out on and probably re-record this bit, but I couldn't because my save was gone. But that doesn't matter because I can just play it in my free time and just skip through everything and whatnot. But uh, now back to the main video. Sprinkles is already in the room waiting for the students to arrive. He clears his voice to make a quick announcement. I want you all to know I feel something of a dog moment coming on, but I assure you it's nothing to be afraid of. His cute little nose scrunches up and he begins dogs can be rather than bring You reach into your backpack and grab some homework from last semester that you forgot to turn in. Sprinkles immediately goes for it and gobbles the sheet of paper like it's a piece of fresh chicken rawhide. <clears throat> I apologize for the outburst. 
I know it seems cliche, but not much in this world satisfies like ungraded work. My, my, Scott, you were, were you studying something with cinnamon? I have been sitting in on a lecture series about the art of cake baking. How insightful. This actually brings up an important point. Thank you, Scott, for reminding me to dole out this indispensable bit of wisdom. You see, but before he can go on any further, Miriam's love drama spills over into the class. Sprinkles is interrupted by words and sparks coming from the back of the room. I told you to save it for after class! You think- Oh. You think I wanted to be thrown from a plane strapped to a stranger? Miriam and Clink- Oh. Miriam and Clink appear to be arguing, but you still haven't learned to speak Clink's language of mechanical noises, Jesus Christ. What? But no, you had to show off to your cool kid friends Jeff and Joan, J and J forever. Watch us form a triangle in midair as we descend. Triangles are the strongest shape, don't you know? Bzz, bzz. Yeah, well that doesn't make it a great day. Beep. <laughs> then take Jeff and Joan with you. You can all hold hands as you pedal down the mountain or off a cliff for all I care. Clink begins to shudder. Steam pours out of the gaps in his panels and then a loud ding stops him in his tracks. Beep! No amount of seasoning is going to make me want to eat that, Clink. It's a shoe! It's a Kentucky Fried Shoe! Clank burps out a completely deep fried sneaker, considering that he himself has his wheels, not feet. It's not entirely clear where it came from. In terms of deep fried foot, deep, deep friend footwear, I guess it looks okay. Deep friend, okay. Clank slowly rolls out of that room to be alone with his shoe. Everyone tries to pretend like they don't see that entire thing go down. Nothing like a loud public breakup to cast a pall over the. Final day of school, Jesus Christ. Well, that was uh, unfortunate. But we mustn't be distracted from what lies ahead. The final competition showdown challenge exam! I'm still working on the title, but I think you get it. Test time approach to see you all in the arena. But before you can think about your upcoming competition, there's a very beautiful soul nearby in need of a pep talk. Hey, Miriam, are you okay? Okay! I'm so mad I could smash a tiny mug spilling several droplets of hot cocoa all over the floor! How could he embarrass me in class like that? In front of everyone! Her tiny cocoa is a delicious treasure, so you know that this breakup is no joke, even if the source of her frustration is such a silly boy. I know that you know this, but I'm gonna say it out loud. You don't need anyone. Me and you, we're gonna cruise through this final test and hit the carpool into Success City. Miriam brightens up, imagining the wind rushing through her short bangs, but she hesitates to embrace the feeling all the way. You're not going to settle up on Colonel Sanders' stallion and ride off into the sunset without me? Of course not. Well, maybe sorta. <laughs> but, I'm sure there's a pony out there with your name on it and a ranch big enough for both of us and whoever else we want to bring along. If it's not Pop or Clank or anyone else you meet today, tomorrow, or this whole year, so what? You're a special person who shouldn't settle for the first someone to show a little interest anyhow. Miriam gives you a big hug and wipes the tears from her cheeks. I should really review my menu for today. I'm going to make a very special soup. And I bet that Professor Dog is going to love it up. While you were pep-talking Miriam, you completely missed lunch, but that's okay because you had a better idea of how to spend the time before your exam. You've decided to head to the arena early to practice a dish. This is it, the location of your final challenge, a test of will, a test of courage, a test of talent. Ooh, I'm almost done with the game, I'm pretty sure. And a chance to beat the pants off of Van Van, the supposed man-man, and his evil -er counterpart, Ashley. As planned, you begin to run through a quick test of a recipe you've been working on. Scott's famous chicken pot pie. I don't even eat it, so. After practicing for months, making this dish come second nature to you, and you're able to quickly get a fresh pot pie in the oven, but as soon as you do, your cram session is interrupted by Colonel Sanders. Scott, what are you doing here? There's still time before the final exam. 
How am I just taking it all in? I'm big into visualizing success. I'm looking at my station and picturing victory. The pot pie has begun to bake and the smell slowly filling the space around you. Visualizing, huh? That's too bad. I was hoping you were cooking something delicious. You'd usually happily share your food with anyone who's hungry, but the last time you let Colonel Sanders get in your head, it cost you a cook-off. You decide that it's time to put your cooking above your romantic desires, but that decision gets hard to stick to when the oven timer goes off behind you. Okay, okay, you got me. I'm doing a little bit more than visualizing. I know, my nose can smell pot pie from 400 yards. That's an oddly specific distance, but you'd expect nothing less from such an oddly specific man. You know, it was a pot. You knew it was a pot pie just from the smell. Not just a pot pie, but a chicken pot pie with an all butter crust. And my nose is telling me something else. Oh no, is it burning? Ha! <laughs> that took me a second. Ha <sighs> no. I can smell that it was made with a heaping helping of teal. What the fuck is TLC? Um, what is T T L C? No C, not T L D R. No, stop it. I mean, uh, oh, tender, loving care. I thought that was a food, but it'll, but it'll probably start burning any second if you don't pull it out. The moment of truth. Wow. Oh, wow. <gasps> I heard that. That wasn't even me. That was him. It's the be it's the best pot pie I've ever tasted. I've always loved country cooking, and I could eat this all day. There's no time left. The final showdown is about to begin. Sprinkles lays down the ground rules. There are no rules. That is, except to cook with everything you've got. You step up for the cook-off of a lifetime. You decide that mac and cheese plus the pot pie you've been practicing are just the dishes that'll push you over the edge to victory. Meanwhile, both Vin Vin and that bitch Ashley are prepping wildly elaborate dishes per their usual over-the-top selves. Miriam has her giant magnifying glass and several sets of tweezers. She's definitely prepared to go big, going small. Colonel Sanders seems to be harnessing his 11 herbs and spices, but he's trying to find a way to improve on something perfect. His original recipe, fried chicken. The intensity in the room starts at... At full, at a full 10 out of 10 with a frenzy of action. Everyone is calling out really cool special cooking moves as they prepare their food. Wow, this is getting serious. Colonel Sanders butters his chicken as it levitates through the air. Egg wash. Egg wash or egg wash? I don't know. Miriam fiercely injects ingredients into an itty bitty pot of broth. Best friend, baster blast, baster blaster. Sorry. Van Van flexes his pectorals as he chops open a sea urchin. <laughs> Let's rock and roid! Ashley scoops her pastries off the tray with lightning speed. Sh shallow personality spatula! Even Clint gets in on it. Five dial pressure point chicken cooking technique! Wait, when did Clint learn to speak English? It's a singularity as he was foretold. We mustn't let it happen or the appliance uprising will take us all. self strap. Van Van quickly unplugs Clint and rolls them out the back door of the arena. As you frantically prepare your... As you frantically... As you frantically prepare your dish, you notice Ashley has her spell book out. Is she going to use some dark magic to turn the tide? You've got a book of your own and you're desperate not to see her win another battle. Should you take this opportunity to fight magic with magic, even if it's almost certainly evil magic? I'll do it the hard way. Who needs magic when you've got passion? I'm going to do it the hard way. Colonel Sanders sees that you've chosen to win on your own terms and he gives you a subtle wink from across the room. I believe in you, Scott. Miriam notices you. And I've always believed in you, Scott, since we were little kids, because I'm your best friend forever. You turn to notice that Miriam is at your station cheering for you. Miriam, what about your dish? If you're here cheering, who's cooking? Tiny food, short cook time. I'm actually already done, so I thought I'd help you. Well, that's sweet, but Miriam tosses a handful of spices directly into your boiling noodles. It's the secret ingredient. 
However, she doesn't know that you lied and the ingredient was made up, and where in the world did you get I have nude from? The boiling pot explodes, sending Miriam flying backwards. The watery noodles begin to swirl in the air, bubbling up into a dark cloud that thickens and congeals before your very eyes. It is I, Steve the Spork Monster! Steve? Wait, what happened to Gorko? You're not here to battle me, are you? We Spork, m spork Monsters are many! I think Gorko had the day off! But you have conjured Steve and I hate to battle, so I'd say you're doing pretty alright. Oh hey, you're in the middle of a cooking competition. I love this stuff, it's better than TV. You crazy kids and your culinary skills really impress me. Mind if I hang out? I'm sorry Steve, but I'm kind of in the middle of something, do you mind? Steve the Spork Monster notices that you've got the grimoire stashed beneath your cooking station. I see what you're up to, crisscross some magical items and accidentally summon me, huh? Huh, <laughs> yeah, you guessed it, sorta. If you hear why, would you mind tossing some fresh noodles in a pot of salted water? I'd love to. I'm always wanted to. I've always wanted to be a top chef. To actually, you know, when I was just a little spork pop back into the old country. You can feel Spark Monster winding up to tell a very long and involved story. You don't know exactly where they came from, but it seems like it was probably lonely there. Actually, you know what? Maybe you should watch from the sins. I really need to focus on this competition. I understand. It's kind of like that time in Monster School that I had fallen asleep during scared tactics in class and when I woke up. You touch the serious stare of Steven and he takes it. Never mind, I'll tell you later. Good luck! Having suffered this huge setback, you don't know how you could ever win. Okay, first, the top one. I can do this. I have what it takes. I came here to win! Out of my hand. Your hair turns mac and cheese orange as culinary energy flows through your body. My heart is pure, my hands are steady, my taste buds have been preparing their entire lives for. Yes, Scott, you are the chosen one, you will avenge me. The power you'd been summoning immediately fades back out. You interrupted my inspiring monologue. S sorry. My heart is pure, my hands are steady, my taste buds have been preparing for their entire lives for this moment. I will show the world my cookery. You begin to levitate off the ground, energy courses through your body. You know that with this power you can do anything. Except turn back time, which would be super useful because while you were powering up your chicken pot pie overcooked in the oven and can't be served. But don't worry dear Scott, you may have suffered some setbacks, but all is not lost. Impressed with your fortitude, Colonel Sanders decides that you have earned his support. I've been watching you today, and I must say, I'm truly impressed. You've been thinking on your feet and rolling with the punches. He steps up to your station and stands right beside you. I'm here to help. All you've managed to make is mac and cheese, and time is almost up, so you're going to need it. But Colonel Sanders, what about the test? What will happen to you? What about the rules? Following the, ru following the rules has never really been my thing. I follow my heart. What a guy! Colonel Sanders unfolds a delicate white towel to reveal the most delicious fried chicken tenders you've ever laid your eyes on. And besides, sometimes unexpected combinations can have surprising effects that suppress their individual efforts. Are you suggesting? If we combine forces, we can form a private food union. Time's up, students. With time expired, it's the moment everyone has been waiting for. You must now present, er, prepare to present your dishes. A handful of students stand tall, but the class seems incomplete. It seems we're missing some students. Pop? Clank? From off, <coughs> from off screen, you hear a pure and insane giggle that can only come from one student. Hehehe, <laughs> I'm flying! Sounds like it's coming from that broom closet over there. Miriam, would you mind? Instead of the closet, you see Pop hanging on a broom hook by the elastic of his underpants. Pop, get down from there right now! Let me guess, did Van Van do s have something to do with this? When someone asked for a wedgie, who am I to refuse? I thought a wedgie was a salad. It looks like Pop is eliminated from the challenge, seeing how he didn't cook anything. I can't feel my legs. May I be excused? Sure, I guess. You kids and your pranks. I must say, it's not the worst prank in Uxal history, but it's not exactly yearbook material. Wait a second. Pranks? Pranks. Clank! Where did that pressure uh, cooker roll off to? 
You wait to hear a signature whir, beep, or other onomatopoeia, but there's none. Somehow he... Somehow he got must have gotten unplugged. Whoa! I guess. We'll have to figure that out later. That leaves only four remaining students. Please collect your final projects. Yes, it has been a long semester. Well, wow, three whole days long. But after days of hard work, the time has come for me to eat. Miriam, please step forward. Now describe your dish. I've made tender udon noodles in a savory soup. My word, it's so delicate. It's like a teeny tiny Naruto Maki. I spy a float in this itty bitsy bowl. Yes, chef. Please call me Sprinkles. Chef is my father's name. Yes, Sprinkles, and some green tea made from baby tea leaves that I picked myself. Sprinkles carefully sniffs around the dish before opening his mouth and letting it just the tip of his spring tongue dip into the bowl. Sublime, would anyone else like a taste? Oh, come on, I'm not one of those dogs who doesn't floss. I even have a really cute electric toothbrush for dogs. Fine, I'll enjoy it all by myself. And in a flash, the entire meal has been devoured. Not that it took much, it was less than a thimble's worth of soup. A plus! Really do I taste a dish with as much love poured into it as yours. Miriam is overjoyed. She gives you a huge hug. Thank you, Scott, for helping me to believe in myself. Van Van, you're up. Now describe your dish. I made... Uni over... How did I do it? Uni over small egg custard, custard in an action urchin shell topped with caviar. Did you skewer one type of urchin with spines from a second, different colored type of urchin? Yeah, yeah, sprinkles. A bit much, don't you think? That's that's exactly why I did it. A bit much is kind of my brand. Doesn't it look cool? Sprinkles and leaves him to sniff the uni, but he can't get his nose close on account of all the spikes. He begins to paw it erratically, causing the custard to slosh around. <laughs> please, please be gentle. How did I do that? I keep forgetting his voice. Please be gentle with my cuisine. Arr. Finally, Sprinkles goes on in tongue first, but he can't get past all the needles. He reels back as his tongue is poked and prodded. Yow! My tongue! The professor appears to be having an allergic reaction to the sting. I can't eat this! It keeps poking my tongue! Disqualified! Stunning turn of events. Who would have thought that serving food in a bowl made of needles could make it difficult to eat? Dejected Van Van does not go gentle into the night. Disqualified for glamour? Don't discount th sympathy. Sympathy. This isn't the last you've heard of me. Before forcing us to endure his swollen tongue for another moment, Sprinkles graciously laps up a bowl of milk. I know, I know, yeah, I'm a dog and I drink milk, get over it. Sometimes it helps calm my agitated tongue. Next student, Ashley, it's time to step up. Now describe your dish. I made, I made orange blossom Turkish delight in a light rose water syrup topped with French meringue and connected by sugar glass. That, that actually doesn't sound too bad. Indeed, it's quite delightful. However, I'd ask that you... Please refrain from eating it or attempting to taste it in any way. It's very fragile and meant to be a display piece. Don't eat the food at a cooking school? Got toast in your ears or something, Scott? I told you, it's a display piece. Actually, I must say, it is beautiful. However, this is a, comp a cooking competition at a cooking school. Yeah, which is why I cooked it and did an extremely good job cooking it, too. I didn't realize that we were having an eating exam. If I wanted to be judged on eating, I'd go to the College of Eating School for the Hungry. I suppose you could smell it if you absolutely insisted, but don't breathe too hard. You might disrupt the sugar spiral. If the food cannot be eaten, it cannot be judged. You are disqualified. Rage overtakes Ashley and she fi finally cannot keep her two-faced routine up. You wouldn't know how high-end cuisine it... You wouldn't know high-end cuisine if it cooked you. And with that, Ashley storms off to rededicate herself to being the best, but this time without being shackled by trying to be fake, nice, and liked by everyone. This isn't the last you've heard of me, either. If this class gets much smaller, I'll be teaching myself. You and Colonel Sanders, the final cook, step up together. Two chefs? What began as a bowl of delicious mac and cheese has become, s s has become something else. 
He examines it closely, sniffing and eye eyeing the bowl. Oh, I don't have a good feeling about this. From somewhere in the room, a literal drum roll, please. Just when I thought I've seen everything in this kitchen, you give me this, this thing! And completely blow me away! In my 49 dog years of life, I have never tasted anything so delicious and perfectly balanced. It's so delicious, in fact, that everyone passes the class. You pass, you pass, and you pass, and you get a pass. You all get a pass! <laughs> all I can think of is Oprah. Everyone gathers around and partakes of the mac and cheese bowl. They all seem to transcend this reality into another dimension. You win! Together, you and Colonel Sanders have made a new menu item. The new menu item is so impressive, even the Vin Vin and Ashley are drawn back in by its magnetic fragrances. When they gaze upon your mac and cheese bowl, they admit they are indeed an excellent chef. Sprinkles declares that you have passed, everyone has passed. That there were supposed to be more battles, but come on, how could they be better than this one? Now that the school year is complete and everyone has graduated, the students return for one last assignment to get their groove on. The cafeteria has been completely redecorated in order to serve as the site of the school's graduation dance. Compared to the massive high-tech cooking arena, the humble decor seems downright cute and cozy. DJ Dog is in the house! Ow, ow, ow! You knew that Sprinkles was a master chef, but also a world-renowned turntablist? Who says you can't teach an old dog new tricks? Vin Vin... I like how Ashley looks. This is actually... Her hair color works with this outfit. And he just looks like a douche jock. Vin Vin and Ashley tell everyone that they've committed themselves to writing the wrongs they did while they were the villains. For a moment, you actually believe them. Not another haunting. No ghosts allowed at graduation. It's clearly written in the school's bylaws. I I was never actually a ghost. So it was all a trick to get you to finally notice me. Oh, amusing. Now that, and now that everyone is together, it's the Spork Monster. He has totally mellowed out. Everyone, the Spork Monster is no more. From here out... I'd prefer that everyone refer to me by my new name, Party Monster! Student tries to finish what he had said, but everyone is too wrapped up talking to Spark. Sorry, Party Monster. Dejected student walks off. Maybe things didn't work out for Miriam romantically, but she found the love in her cooking, and you know she's gonna do great. Oh, she's kinda cute. A red carpet rolls out across the floor of the ballroom. It's like a Hollywood movie premiere. Who could command such an entrance? It's Pop. He's arrived late to the dance, but apparently for good reason. Oh my god, he's a king! Or a prince. I don't know. He's stupid, though. Uh, walking the carpet, you see perched atop top is his dirty chef's hat. A, a crown? Welcome back, Pop. I know you weren't able to complete the final exam and accept your diploma, so we had it mailed directly to your father. We figured it was the least we could do for the school's dean. Oh, now I get it. And we get a new wing on the school, not to mention the honor of educating the son of the chancellor of such and such. The music at the dance is interrupted by the sound of sparking and electrical hissing. It's Clank who has arrived late to the dance. Now that I have graduated, I can reveal my truth. Whoa, he's still doing the talking thing. I am Clank and I am not on of this earth. I am actually from a far away planet in another dimension. What? What? I actually feel like I knew this this whole time. Now that I have learned the ways of your kind, I must return. Miriam, will you come with me? I don't know what to say. Besides, no, obviously. I've just begun to learn who I really am. This isn't the time for me to devote my life to figuring out who you are, Clank. You're blown away by Miriam's maturity. It's pretty clear she has managed to surpass you in that regard. I understand, kind of. Humans are weird. A portal opens up and Clank disappears through it. Finally, Colonel Sanders arrives. Howdy, classmates. Oh, wow, he looks really good. No, I like him better with the suit, to be very honest, and apron, but, you know, good for him, being casual. Just like the first day you met him, he has come prepared to feed the entire class, however, it's not enough to just give them a bucket of chicken. This time, it's a full meal. I didn't, I didn't get to be the most famous chicken man in the history of chicken and man by not reminding people to go out and buy my chicken.
the end. Oh, I finished it. Mm, I finished it, I think. I mean, there is a question. Oh, no. Oh, oh, shit. No, it's not the end. As everyone feasts on their delicious chicken dinner, Colonel Sanders finds you sitting at the edge of the dance floor. Scott, what are you doing sitting all alone? Oh, you know, just waiting for the right person to ask me to dance. I wonder, might you tell me what are the qualities that you would expect to find in such a lucky person? Off the top of my head, oh, I don't know, a spicy mollusk, a tidy goatee, and a degree from the University of Cooking School Academ Academy for learning just to name a few. It truly is my lucky day. Would you dance with me? Yes, I would love to. As you glide across the dance floor hand in hand with Colonel Sanders, the future stretches out in front of you. And once my 100th franchise has been running, I'll be ready to take a day off and I'll be so glad to spend it together with you, Scott. How sweet. We'll work together and play together. Colonel Sanders stops dead in his tracks. Work together? Well, um, I think this is something I'll just need to do by myself. But who will help you run your restaurants? I don't believe I need help. Besides, based on your time at school here, do you really think running restaurants is the best path forward? Could it be? You found a love connection but failed to earn Colonel Sanders' respect as a chef? Can you live with only half of him? Will you be able to endure sharing him with his other love, the life of an entrepreneur? I, I suppose I could enroll at pastry school. Oh, my dear Scott, I'm sure that you'll find your place eventually. Along the way, you'll have me by your side. The end! Yay! Now, now Colonel Sanders is gonna marry me. If you like this video, leave a like, comment down below what you want me to do next, subscribe if you're new, and may the odds be ever in your favor. This was a pretty interesting game if you ask me. But this is the last episode. Yay! Uh, confetti and whatnot, you know.